everybody. How y'all doing? I'm so glad to have you guys here tonight. I'm very honored to be here. Thanks, Yolanda and Wanda, for inviting me. Um, it is a privilege to be here, and, and there is something that is so good that we're going to talk about tonight. So I know it's going to bless you for real. All right. Now, listen, uh, tonight is going to be pretty deep. Um, it's What we're talking about tonight is really fresh from heaven. So it's real important that you listen because um, I've been, this thing been burning all week. And when God has been giving it to me, I've been writing it down. So it's in my head now. I don't really need my notes because I've been thinking about this thing all week. And you get to be the first to get it. Isn't that awesome? That is so good. So I really don't need this. I tell you, most everything is in my head. Uh, I just That's how much I've been impacted by it. So it's, it's already blessed me. So my job now is just to share what has already helped me and blessed me. Okay. So let's pray real quick that everybody's ears, um, is wide open that, you know, um, you know, we're not thinking about your favorite TV show at home. We're not thinking about if you left the oven on before you came, your mind is totally free to hear what God's about to say. Because you know how the enemy work. The enemy, as soon as you're about to get that nugget from heaven, the first thing that hits you is, did I leave my car, my lights on? <laughs> Something crazy to pull you out. And, uh, you know, you, but, <laughs> so Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to be here with all these blessed singles on tonight, God. And I just thank you, Father, for the anointing. The worship on tonight was amazing, Lord. Thank you for allowing us, Lord God, to be able to feel your presence. Thank you for, Lord. God, our brother and sister who led us into worship, Lord, I thank you, Father, for the tabernacle hosting this event, Lord God, being, Lord God, uh, spearheaders, Lord God, for you to bring singles together to hear what you have to say. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Are y'all ready? Y'all got to say, I'm ready. Oh, come on. That was weak. You got to say, I'm ready. All right. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So, singles. Now, many times I have did a lot of teachings on the maximizing part of singleness. But tonight I have a assignment to give you something that you probably never probably thought about as a single person. Because, um, and I'm just going to ask a couple of questions. How many of you, just with a show of hands, would like to get married? Okay. How many of you is like, I'm single for life, I'm good? I just, there's nobody in there. Okay, so we all on the same page. All right, so that's a good thing. That is a good thing. Um, now, the thing I want to start with is, is to share with you that we got to bring our perspective correct when it comes to singleness. And for years, a lot of Christian singles um, basically say, well, I'm single and I'm waiting on God. And, you know, we just start saying things like that in cliches. I'm just waiting on God to bless me with my Boaz, my roof. I've heard that for years. All right. Now, some revelation begin to start hitting me this week about how singles are thinking. Um, God is pleased with his single people. He's, he sees the sacrifice um, that single people are making. This is things that he will share with me in my secret time. So he's pleased. He is not up there saying, I don't, I'm not going to bless these single people. You know, I'm going to make them just sit there and suffer. He's not, that's not in his mind. He is literally trying to bless us. He really want to bless us. He want to bless you more than you want to be blessed. I'm convinced about that. The thing God is more concerned about is more his purpose and his agenda more than you want to be laying in bed with somebody. Can I be that open and real? <laughs> because I know I just want to have somebody to hold me. God is a little more concerned about some other things than somebody holding you. Because you could have anybody hold you. <laughs> and, then, and then two weeks later, you'd be like, what in the world did I do? So the holding part is not God's biggest agenda. We need to find out what is his big agenda. So we all know the scripture, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. We know that scripture by memory, but this is the, this is going to be the nugget that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about mission first. Everybody say mission first. mission first. This is going to narrow down for you where you are in your single path and who you're going to marry. It's going to really make more sense to you because we are asking God to bless us with somebody and we don't even have a mission in our life. So what is the mission for tonight? When they, when they, um, my sisters, when they put these, this event together, what was the mission? Somebody tell me what was the mission of this event? 
Yes. Good. Okay. She said uh, this mission tonight was for people to come together to worship, praise, and to seek God first. Anybody else? Well, our sister tonight got up and shared one of the mission statements. This was a time to bring single people together to come to worship. So there was a mission statement. Everybody understood that. Now, she had a mission statement first before y'all came here. Y'all understand her? Y'all wouldn't have been here if they did not have a vision or a mission. Yeah, we would have all been in our living rooms right now chilling or at the park. So the mission is what brought us together. That's how your mate is going to be coming into your life. No mission, no mate. <laughs> simple, right? That's a simple word. So you got a lot of women. Now, can I talk to y'all sisters for a second? <laughs> Lord, he's the one for me. And let me just, I'm going to give you a little secret to ask the man that you're looking at right now, that you, that you praying about. Just ask him, what is your mission? If he start going, abda, 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 you ain't the one. <laughs> Keep on walking. Because <laughs> you know what? What's going to happen is you as a help me is coming to help him with his mission. So if his mission is for him to lay in bed 24 hours a day, you are coming to help him do that. <laughs> you are only coming, I, I know this go, and this is why a lot of women get frustrated. Because you marry somebody with no mission. And then, God, what did I got? You got a man, but he has no mission or no vision. I, tell, I say this all the time to my sisters. Would you get in a car with a blind man? If a man had a good heart and wanted to drive you around the city, but he couldn't see, would you do it? And the sister says, good. Unanimous, no, right? So this is what we do, though, when it comes to relationship. He looks good. Can I take you out to dinner? Yes. And we go out to dinner with him. And we don't ask him, can you see? Because what you did was you just got in his taxi cab and don't know if this man can drive. And he just cruising, blind as a bat, just flying down, down Southwestern Boulevard, just flying. And you sit there like, why is this man running off the road? It's because a man only goes where his vision takes him. Okay, so the man that you may be interested in, you got, listen, forget how tall he is, forget the hair texture, and forget how you and him can make a good baby and how your baby will look good, and you know, forget all that crazy stuff, because that's the stuff that's getting a lot of people in trouble. You got to really find out what is his, can he see spiritually? That man is taking you somewhere, either up or down, you going somewhere with him. So, now let's go to, our, now there's a story that y'all all know. The book of Genesis. I've been compelled by God because I got a, I think for the next four, I, I got a couple of other events I got to do on, on singleness. And I think for the next few ones, God has been compelling me to stay on in the book of Genesis because we got to understand how God saw, saw this thing. He makes the environment. Then he gets the man to take care of the environment. Then he gets the woman to help the man take care of the environment. That's the same thing he's doing for you. He never takes the woman and the man and then say, okay, y'all together, now what y'all going to do? That's backwards. So what God does, he's create a mission and then says, I need people to manage it. So he goes, find you and says, in you have his mission to fulfill everything I design, and I'm going to give you the right help me to help you. So in her is going to have the vision, and in you is going to have the vision, but I'm going to give you as the man the, the leadership role as the manager. So, you have the mission here in the middle. She's way over here in, in, uh, in Africa. He over here in Australia. And the mission brings them two together. And all of a sudden, they come and meet and say, wow, look what God has done. And God said, I brought y'all together because y'all both had mission in mind. Now, this is the deep part. This is what he was showing me this week. We thought... 
love is the only thing that's going to keep us two together. And the revelation finally hit. Because <laughs> love is not a feeling. It's a choice. You're going to have to say, I choose to love you. It's a choice. I used to think it was something you're going to feel and you get those goosebumps. That's not love. Love is when you go have to choose to say, stay in something. You have to choose to love that individual, right? So watch this. When it gets difficult, guess what's going to keep you guys together? The mission. And guess who's connected to the mission? Because he's the one who birthed the mission in the first place. So when you get God, you should be getting a mission. So it's crazy for you to find somebody who don't even know God. This is why he says, how can two walk together? Let's agree. Agree on what? Agree on the mission. <laughs> We've been saying, how can two walk together? Let's they agree. Finish this. Think about what God is what that scripture is saying. You got to agree on a lot of things. Y'all got to agree on financial. You got to agree on how many kids we want. You got to agree on what church we want to go to. All that is tied to your mission. So you got a lot of people who's just jumping in saying, Lord, I thank you for blessing me with somebody. But there is no common mission. So two years down the road, after the sex is gone, after the, all the, honey, you're beautiful, after all that is gone, guess what's going to happen? It's dry. So you get up in the morning, and you're like, oh, God, I'm laying next to this old thing. <laughs> and it becomes just the normal Routine. Now y'all coming to church and you putting on that fake smile like we're happy. So you have a lot of couples now who is actually starting to be honest enough and say, and they come, and a lot of times they say this to me because they know I speak to singles. They come to me and tell me to tell singles, wait, don't rush. While you guys are dating, find, y'all need to be talking about mission, not about beauty and all that. Because the mission is going to let you know, ding, ding, this is the, the person. So, perfect example. You got God who basically says, let me read you what, what it says here in, um, in Genesis. Because this thing, this thing is, is it's, I, I think I can really stay, preach in, from Genesis until Jesus comes. I'm going to be so truthful. <laughs> There's too much of that. He said in in. Um, verse 26 of chapter 1 and God said let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the sea over, of the, of the, uh, of the, over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so God created man in his own image in his image he created he him male and female created he them this is what the mission is he tells them he blessed them and says Unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. He gave them a mission there and says, listen, this is why I made you. This all goes back to purpose. And I've been teaching on purpose for like the last year. Your purpose has everything to do with the person you're marrying. You were made to connect with someone to fulfill purpose. So if you're going to get married, you and that person have to have purpose in your life. And, I, and, and God knows I'm probably going to have to keep using this analogy until I leave this earth because it's helping so many people. But I, I've shared this on a couple of other past seminars about how you have many, many of us who were made to be uh, one thing. We, we're putting other things connected to us, and that wasn't made to connect with us. So I'll give you a good example, and I, I use this a lot. I'll use this microphone. And how you have this mic, microphone here, like the sisters, y'all the microphone, okay? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll say, I'll, actually, no, I'll use this brother right here. This brother right here is the microphone, okay? Now, alone, this microphone has purpose. Everybody understand that? What is the purpose of this microphone? You see how easy it is to, for us to identify the purpose of this? That's how it should be when we look at our own lives. We should be able to say, I'm made not just to be saved. You are saved to do something. Get deeper into that purpose. Don't just say, I'm just, my purpose is to be saved and worship. That's, that's part of it. We all believe we're supposed to worship. But there was something specific you were made to do in God's kingdom. So 
This brother is the microphone, and this is what we do. This brother get this microphone. He's like, Lord, I'm lonely. I'm going to find me a help me to help me be a mic better. <laughs> so he sees this stand right here and says, hmm. Wow, look at, look at the way that thing built. <laughs> and guess what he do? He now puts his life and connects to this stand. Now, let me ask you, is the stand holding him? Yeah. It's holding him. So, you know, this person is doing, doing, you know, it's doing some good things. But was it made for that? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, two things. He got married to this stand. Uh Uh-oh, the revelation just hit him. There is a mic stand that was made by the creator who made the microphone. They knew in their mind this microphone needs something specifically for it. And it fits so perfect. So guess what? The mic is happy and the stand is happy. You see the harmony that your marriage could look like if you stop putting your mic on tables and, and, and boards and stuff like that? So at some point, yes, this is holding the mic. It is. It really is holding the mic. But at some point, this table is going to start feeling abused because this table was made to hold things like music stands. So look at, look what takes place when these two come together. This is left... By itself, the music stands have nothing to put on. You see how the, everything is starting to spread and getting and out. That's why the enemy is trying to hit you to, to marry the wrong person. Because if you marry the wrong mic for, microphone, you just jacked up two other people's lives. <laughs> this is why the devil attacks you the way he does. His whole thing is to try to get everybody to not find mission. So even though this microphone is being held, the mission of this mic in this stand is not going not to add up correctly. But, and the funny thing about when you see this microphone, this microphone stand, this looks so normal that when you look at it, you just be like, it's so normal that when you look at it, you don't even pay attention to it. It's, you're like, it's supposed to be like that. So what am I saying? Others is going to be able to see how good you and your spouse look. But I'm going to tell you the God's truth, because I do sound. If I, if, I, if I see a mic land on a table like this, immediately something to me will be like, that, ain't, that don't belong there. You know why? Because I have knowledge of where this thing should be going. So God gives you pastors. He gives you other people in your life who can tell you, that ain't him. That's right. you, too, you too valuable. Don't hook up with them. He's saved, but that ain't yours. <laughs> he going to hold you for two years. So you have a lot of people, I ain't listen to my pastor. I'm just going to marry who I want. He, he smelled good, so I'm marrying him. <laughs> <laughs> you get him and die all of a sudden. <laughs> all of a sudden, you're like, Lord, what did I just do? So now, please turn with me to Genesis chapter 22, if you have your Bible. We all here know the story about um, Isaac and Rebecca. You guys hear, hear that story about Isaac and Rebecca? All right, now, this, you know, something just jumped out at me, and I just said that I would, be, I, would be, I would not be a good Christian if I don't share this information. Because I wanted to be selfish with this one. This was so good, I just wanted to keep it to myself and not share it. But I wouldn't, you know, I think God would spank me if I did that. So I said, I'm going to share it with y'all because y'all are so wonderful. I need you to look at verse 18. In verse 17 of chapter 22 of Genesis, this is what it reads. This is a promise that God was making to Abraham after he was about to offer up Isaac. All right. He says that in blessing, I will bless thee and in multiplying, I will multiply thee, multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand, which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Please underline that because that is something about to blow your mind in a second where it says, thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou 
hast obeyed my voice. Okay, we got that part, right? Now, turn over to Genesis chapter 24. And this is about the, I hope this smacks you like it smacked me in a good way, you know. Not. All right, so, verse, look at verse 60. At this moment, Abraham, I mean, Isaac and Rebekah met. And, well, not, not met, but basically this is when the servant went out um, and basically found uh, Rebekah. And as Abraham was about to die, and he sent his servant out to go out and find uh, his son and wife. And look what happens here. Verse 60 says, this was the brother of Rebekah after the servant went and got her. It says, and they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of many. Of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. Underline that. Uh oh, Lord, let this thing hit, 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 let this revelation hit them so strong like it hit me. Here you have in chapter twenty-two, there was a mission given to Isaac about how he was going to possess the gate. So the man got a mission in chapter twenty-two, and then chapter twenty-four. They just spoke the same mission to Rebecca, the woman he was destined to marry. Just, y'all probably missed it. It went over. Some of y'all here like, Ooh. So on what am I saying? Isaac got a mission to possess the gates. Rebecca now gets a mission to possess the gates. What happened? Purpose and mission was what caused them two to be made for each other. So the thing, so when, when you go out to dinner with that person, just ask them, what did God tell you about yourself? Well, you know, I just love the Lord. Okay, you love the Lord, but what else did he tell you about yourself? I just love him. I just love going to church. God is just good to me. Okay, I, I know he's good to you. But did he tell you anything specific? What's, what is he speaking to you? What is your calling? What was you made to do? What is your giftings? In my new book, which is coming out in like, it's super soon. I'm, it's been, it's getting so like at deadline time, I'm getting excited. I do a chapter about um, how we date wrong. And, you know, when we go on dates, we like to, you know, set the mood all nice and dress our best and all this stuff. This is stuff how we've been taught in the past. And, you know, we sit there and we just talk about hobbies. You know, what do you like to do? You know, I, you know, I like sports. You know, what's your favorite football team? Um, I like Buffalo Bills. You know, we talk about casual stuff like that. And I tell people all the time, when I go out with mine, I'm going to have a notebook. <laughs> I'm going to be asking some questions. I forget, forget, I want my question one, are you nuts? Okay, question number two, are you a woman? Question number three, is that your name? <laughs> question number four. See, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you know what? <laughs> That's going to be my day, my first day. And then after all that come out, what kind of sports you like? Because I may not be there to hear about your team after, I, after you ask a question one, two, and three. <laughs> but, so what am I saying is that there are certain things that we do wrong. We do it the wrong way, and God understands order. That's why God, everything with God is God, what God does, he goes to the end of your life, sees your end, and then he comes back and take you where you are and bring you to it. Perfect example. He's already told us how, to, how the devil's life going to end, and we're still crying every day. He tells us how our end look, and we still talk about, I ain't going to make it. It's like he showed you the end of the story. And we still tell him, oh, I'm not going to make this journey, Lord. And God is like, oh, my God, how more plainer can I make this? So what he does, he's went to the end of your life and said, okay, I need, her. that's why he says, the thoughts to give you uh, peace and, and a good expected end. He's trying to get you to the end. So he says, I know the person who's going to help you get to the end. Wait for my guidance and direction because I know who's going to properly get you there. That's not just husband and wife. That's just friends in general. There's some friends that God wants to put in your life that's going to be right alongside you to talk with you and pray with you, who you can be open with. These are things that God is like. It's everything that has to do with mission. 
he is so mission oriented that he is basically trying to say, listen, if I can get these single people all over the country, all over the world to begin to start seeking what the king is saying. Start kicking, seeking what is God's voice? What is God really saying for my life in the season of my life? That's going to really start knocking down who shouldn't be in your life. The problem we have is we're not listening to what the king is telling us. Perfect example. I love who did who made up the game that we did earlier. That was OK. Excellent game. Now, we were all at the table and everybody at the table had to get up and communicate um, our ages or our birthdays without talking or something like that. Right now, that was a way to bring some type of 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 co- cohesiveness to us. Now, this overall gym, who does this overall gym belongs to? The church. In this church, there's many tables. And there's different people sitting at min- in many tables. And the funny thing about this exercise, this exercise was designed to bring people to start talking or to start interacting. So God has this huge kingdom, and he has you over here. He has this person over here. He has this person over here. And God is like, listen, I already know what this table is supposed to be doing. I already know what this person. And my job is to get you to sit next to people or get you to connect with people who have the same mission in my big space. Though you are in Buffalo, your husband can be in Los Angeles today. And in God's timing, that man has to come to Buffalo because there's something going on here that he just needs to see. So... Next year in October, he's like, I need to, my family is having a reunion in Buffalo. Why am I coming there? And then he walks through tops and you trip right in front of him. And God says, wow, look at my wonderful masterpiece. (laughs) You would be, you would be shocked that, and we limit God to just a table. And there's other tables in this room. All this belong to God. There's most, there's countries that you can't even pronounce. Uka Baba. I don't even know if that where that's at. But there's people that live there who want a wife and a husband. <laughs> and will take good care of you too. Put you on the back, carry you to church. <laughs> <laughs> they will. There's women over there that will treat men like gold. They will make sure listen, men, they will cook for you. <laughs> they will really cook and will love doing it. You don't gotta pay them out of the table. You know, <laughs> they will do it because it's their culture. And God says, okay, I got a lot of beautiful daughters here and I got a lot of beautiful sons here. And I know who have the right DNA inside them to get to the mission because the mission is what God is thinking. So when he puts anything together, he's always putting them together for mission, not because of pleasure. It's mission, mission first. That's got to be. So the, literally, honestly, this should narrow down your circle of who you're going to be married. So when you hook up, you need to find your mission quick. Lord, I'm called to, you, you gifted me for something. So when people come in your life who do not complement your mission, don't sit there and start speaking in tongues over it. That's God's sign telling you that is not your mic stand. <laughs> And we sitting there dancing around this thing, fasting and praying over it. And God ain't changing this thing to no mic stand. You can sit there and waste 20 years waiting for something that was not yours. So what he does, he says, listen, let me, he says, let me just start putting, going back to my original intent. The reason why I like about Genesis is because Genesis shows you the original intent of how God designs. It shows you how he creates things. God always creates mission first. Then he puts managers over those missions. So this church is a result of a mission. So when the pastor basically came here, guess what? The church was already there. I'm not talking about the church building because we think church is just a building. So you had a man who birthed the rest, like the gym and all that. That came out because there was a mission. If there was no need for a church here, there would not be one. So he brings a man to, to manage the work. Then he brings a helper to help him manage. That's how your life should look. You are, sisters, you are coming into some man's life to help him do whatever God called him to do. The way you're going to know if this is the man that you're supposed to be helping is ask him, what do you have me to help? 
Because one thing I learned about women, if y'all don't find, if, if, if that man don't have no vision, that's cool. it's, y'all will be the most frustrating individuals because y'all were made to help. Y'all are made to multiply things. And if you don't have nothing to multiply, you will feel like you're suffocating. <laughs> it is the truth. So this is why, sisters, you have to be patient because God is starting to make men. He's starting to give men vision again. He's starting to get, but what's happening, why he's doing that, sisters start snatching them too soon. The man got to do a whole turnaround, and as soon as he turned like this, bam, there she is. And she snatched him halfway out of the cocoon. (laughs) He got one wing coming out. He's still, (laughs) he ain't even a full butterfly now. (laughs) And you just snatched him, and then he still got the 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 uh, the, the, the legs of a, a caterpillar, one arm of a butterfly, and then you bring him to the altar and say, "Now, Lord," <laughs> and God says, "You just a little too soon." He would have been a blessing if you could have just been patient. Now the challenge to the men. Oh Lord, see y'all sisters, y'all need to be happy. Okay. All right. Now, the challenge of the men. Let me, oh, Lord. Now, men, listen. In Genesis, he gives him a lot. The first thing he gave him was responsibility. Let the brothers say responsibility. Yes. Uh-oh, got quiet. I ain't hear nothing. <laughs> he gave the man responsibility. This is the indicator if he's ready for the help. So you have a lot of men, I want to get married, I need a wife in my life. And God is like, listen, you're not even responsible over the little bit I gave you. So what he does is he gives him a a season of responsibility. And the first thing he had to do was get that relationship with God so tight. Now, the first thing Adam did not, Adam did not get a wife first. Adam got the privilege to name things. Everything Adam named became, he looked at the lion and said lion, and it became a lion. He looked, at the, he looked at the dog and said dog, and it was a dog. It says whatever Adam named it, it became. Now I understand why he could not have done that with Eve in his life. It makes a lot of sense now. Because this was what it, it would have looked like this if Eve would have been in his life before he was naming stuff. Lion. Uh-uh. Nah. Mm-mm. That's a nasty name. <laughs> I don't want to be like, what's wrong with lying? No, uh, lying. Call it, call it Melissa or something. They would have been arguing over naming. You see what I'm trying to say? So God was so smart. He said, for this one, I need her to come in with everything is in place. Because if I bring her in at foundation stage... You may not even build nothing because y'all be ready to kill each other on first day one <laughs> because you guys think differently. And God knows that. So that's why the man sometimes have to endure and be alone because God is trying to teach him how to, how to use the authority he has. So when she comes in, she's helping him with the authority he created. Does that make sense? Yes. So now you're starting to understand why a lot of sisters are getting dis- disappointed. They're getting a lot of men who don't have authority. They have it, but don't understand that they have it. So they're basically just living, but not basically exercising what God has blessed them with. So they're working at McDonald's when they were supposed to own McDonald's. Because they just don't know. You and you were supposed to come and help him because y'all think much faster than us. And God made, I'm at the point now where I've, I've accepted it. <laughs> you guys are smart. You are. And I thank God. We thank God for you. Us brothers thank God for the women. So now a real good man will basically understand that for me to get the mission done, I need the help. This is what real godly men are thinking. Godly men are not up there saying, I can do it all by myself. You know, I'm, 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 I'm. he's actually, he's like, you know, I can use the help when he understands mission. But the thing I do love about Adam was Adam just got to that place where he really didn't know he needed help. He really didn't know. Adam was so about the mission that God had to interrupt him to bless him. Isn't that amazing? You're just so busy serving God. God said, wait a minute. You just, let me just interrupt you. Go to sleep because you're just, you just too fulfilled. <laughs> That's the kind of man you want because guess what? He's going to get up. You're just going to become an enhancer to his life. 
I tell people all the time, I say, I, I really, and I don't say this, I'm, I'm not just saying this, but I really feel like, and I never, I wasn't always like this, but I feel like I'm, sometimes I'm the most happiest man on earth. I do feel that sometimes. And I know there's happier people than me, but I know for me, I just, some, I just love God has, has just done so much great things in my life that I just got to a place where I've appreciated my relationship with God. And I love how, I love everything God did for me. I'm just so happy. I don't want to be nobody else but me. I like my skin. I like my personality. I laugh by myself. You know, I'm crazy. Absolutely. I will laugh by myself. I will go to the movies all by myself and just have a blast. But you know what? I do tell people that for me, and this might not be somebody else's vision, but for me, because I'm so happy and because I'm so blessed, if she cannot multiply that, I will stay single. I don't care how beautiful and how many tongues she speak. <laughs> There's too much happiness in this Eden that God has blessed me with. And if she comes in and, de- and depreciate the Eden I got, I don't need it. So in 1 Corinthians, Paul gives you a choice. and says you can choose to be single. Uh-oh. Because he understands that some people want to get married. They may not be ready so Paul says, I'm going to give you a choice. Paul says, listen, you can choose to stay, remain single and just serve the Lord. And then he actually had the boldness to say, hey, I wish y'all was like me. I'm having fun doing this thing without no, no, no issue. <laughs> he threw that in there for those who don't know. It said 1 Corinthians. Paul was like, listen, if you can stay single, do it. When you get married, there will come challenges with it. But the challenges shouldn't be, listen, understand what I'm saying. The challenges shouldn't be with the two individuals. It should be because the enemy is attacking the union. But if I'm always fighting her back and forth, guess what? The mission, we ain't even talking about the mission yet. We fighting because she's a mic, she's done a mic stand. So the devil like, yes, I got another, I got two other people off mission. And he's just sitting back saying, they were, they, her and her husband was designed to just change the whole city. But just because she married the wrong person, now she only changing a corner of the city. And he's happy with that. I don't care. You go ahead and save your 200 people when you were supposed to save 200 million. I'll just save them, keep them 200 and be happy with that. And we going to church like at least I got somebody in my arm, not knowing that God designed you in mission to take over the whole, whole county. So this is why now you go back to Genesis, you're going to see that when he says to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish. He was telling them, listen, I want you to take over. He says, I need you now to manage my property. God made property and he need managers. You are a manager. So the person that's coming in your life, God is holding you responsible to manage that person for him. Mm, mm, mm. So let's say this sister and me hooked up, right? She's a blessing from God. I'm her blessing from God. God is not going to tell her. He's not going to tell her all the time. Go encourage him. Go and go and fix him dinner. A manager says, you know what? God, you gave me this blessing and I'm going to take good care of your property. That's what a manager does. If a manager always got to go to the boss and ask the boss, should I should I flip the hamburgers over at McDonald's? Should I should I turn the fire down? You know what the boss going to do? I don't need you. You're actually bothering me more. I put you there because I trust you that you can handle this blessing. So this is what happens. Oh, Lord, let me get through this. (laughs) You have a lot of men who God will bless them with a beautiful wife. And and the wife and God is so smart. He tells us in Ephesians how to make a wife uh, proud. He said, love her like Christ, love the church. This is what the boss is telling the manager. Love her like Christ of the church. And you got brothers who skip over that chapter when they read Ephesians. And then when she acts crazy, they go to God and say, Lord, it's this wife you gave me. And he says, I'm just, I already told you the ingredients or how to handle my blessing. So if, if, if I blessed uh, uh, Miss Yolanda with a car, 
I am not in charge now of if that car has oil in it, if that car has gas in it. That is her responsibility, but it was my blessing to her. You understand that? So if she's not driving that car in two months, who follows it? Exactly. I did my part and blessed her with it, but the keep up of it has everything to do with her. Now you want to understand when you get married, if something goes crazy, don't start saying the devil. It's your lack of management. Lord. Because you're managing. So listen, no, I'm not now, trust me when I'm telling you, because some things, you know, you, sometimes you get to the point where it's like, oh, I married a stand. I jacked up, Lord, next time I ain't going to marry no stand. You learn. But I'm talking about with knowledge going in and you say, you know what, I'm going to take this thing. I'm going to take this brand new car off the lot and I ain't going to change the oil and I ain't going to put no coolant flush in it. And I'm just going to, no, no gas, and I'm just going to drive from here to California. And I'm going to sing praises all the way there. <laughs> In the name of you, you just worshiping, driving down the 33 or the 90. You will be worshiping, but you will be worshiping, waiting for AAA. You see what I'm saying? So what am I saying? The spirituality of it is not going to sustain it. it. That comes with knowledge of what you got. So if you know I got a car and it needs this type of gas in it, you, need, you maintain it based on knowledge, not based on tongues. So when you get married, your tongues is not going to keep your marriage. If you, oh Lord, I, I want to be so open. I sure, but I don't want to, you know, I just, because really us as singles, we got to wake, we, when that, brothers, when the woman come in our life, we got to get in our mind that she's going to do everything we want. And, you know, we don't have to hold her hand. And uh, listen, if she is, if that is the design of the car that God is putting in your life, hold the hand as much as we have to, to keep that car running. Because if we don't hold it, uh-oh, should I go here? Go there? I, okay, sister said go there. <laughs> if I don't keep hold, if I don't keep putting gas in the car, and, that, and every time that car drives into my gas station, and, and I keep telling the, the car I'm closed, I don't want to hold your head, I ain't telling you you're beautiful. Guess what? Guess what happens when a need starts getting... Boy, revelation knowledge. Just now, the funny thing about it, the car don't want to go to the other gas station, but because of the need of how it was made. Oh Lord, help me! It immediately shifts your mind to the next service station. Premium. <laughs> Lord, help me. <laughs> Premium octane. <laughs> So what have I said? So, so for the men, we have to learn what makes a woman run. In knowledge, not in spirituality. You see what I'm trying to say? This is all part of mission. Because if this person is going to get you to the end of your life, you need a good car to get you there. And if you don't know how the car works, I don't care how much you see that brick wall. Listen, you're not going to get there because your tools are messed up. And the tools are messed up because of your lack of knowledge. Now you understand why my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge, not lack of tongues, not lack of church, lack of knowledge. Because <laughs> that's what's wrong. We, we dance and shout over on top of things we should just know. So as a woman, study men. Read books. How, ask God. Look, you got to start talking. You got to find out what makes men think the way they think. That's what's going to, I'm telling you. I've seen too many people who just went strictly on spirituality, and that's why the, the, the rate has gotten so high in the church, because we, we in our ignorance, and I even, I'm talking about myself and everything, I didn't know it was this intense. I did not know marriage was that intense. When I say intense, I'm talking about intense of the things you, everybody who's married will tell you, you got to work at it. And they go, come on, I'm at it. You can't just put on a neutral and just start driving. It, you're going to have to steer it, make the turn. You have to control, you know, how you get to the destination, and that's how it's going to be in marriage. So the thing is, the mission is Los Angeles, California. God says, I need you to leave Buffalo and go to, uh, to Los Angeles. That's mission. So I'm going to give you the tools to get there. So he gives you a car, which would be your spouse. Your spouse's job is to get you to the mission. Your spouse's job is not the mission. Oh, God, help me. 
So you got to see them only as a blessing, no more or no less. Because guess what? When they get you to your destination, God will say, well done, because you both arrived to my mission. But you know what most people do? We get in the car and say, thank you, Jesus. I got my blessing. I ain't going nowhere now. I'm going to stay right here, and I'm just going to enjoy this blessing. And God's like, hello, I gave it to you to come here. You're not even in Cleveland, and you are shouting in parked. (laughs) And I need you in L.A. by 2 o'clock tomorrow because of mission. (laughs) And you went to Cleveland. You went over to Canada's Wonderland and everything. Because you forgot mission. (laughs) So you in the car, guess what? You are enjoying the car, but guess what? You are out of God's will. Oh, Lord, help me. Now you understand why we need to get mission first. So the husband has to say, this is where I'm going. I know I'm going to L.A. What direction are you going in? If she says, I'm going to New York, you're not the one. I'm going to L.A. Uh, What what direction are you going? Um, I feel led to move to Mexico. Okay, you're not the one. Um, (laughs) I'm going to L.A. The Lord already told me I'm going to L.A. And I just want to know what direction God is sending you. Um, you know, I'm about San Antonio has always been in my spirit. No, you're not her. Okay. I'm going to L.A. And, and, and the funny thing about this, now watch this. I'm going to L.A. And I, I really need some help getting there. And, you know, and she says, you know, I'm going to Canada. Okay, she's not the one. Before I get to this one, she says, I'm going to L.A. I was wondering if you had, if, if you had some, some um, directions. I can even help you get there. That's her. You see how easy, how simple that was? She's already got L.A. in her spirit. I got L.A. in my spirit because of mission, which is going to make this easy to go along because we have commonality. Yes. Now, what we do in our dating, we don't ask about destination. We just get a very, oh, she got beautiful hair. Listen, I don't care where you go. Come on, let's hook up because we're not looking at the purpose. So we marry somebody who want to go to San Antonio in their spirit, in their heart, and you know God is telling you to go to L.A., now you're not walking together because you're not agreed, though you're both speaking in tongues. So, so she's going, he, my, yeah, 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 going this way. He's going, t, 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 to, 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 this way. And guess what? Speaking in tongues, going like this. I hope this is making so much sense to you. If we get mission, God has been pressing me so much. If we get mission in our spirit, you will start to know super quick. You ain't them. You are not Mr. Man. You are not Mrs. Mrs. I was about to say Mrs. Man. Mrs. Woman. (laughs) I had to fix that. (laughs) So this is your number one task as singles. Lord, okay, at some point you will have to... Because I, lo- I, I love, I can sit there and, but at some point you got to put your hands down. At some point you have to open your eyes out of prayer. And at some point you have to just say, okay, Lord, I need clear instructions now. I pray, because he says, if you acknowledge me in all your ways, I'm going to direct your path. So he says, you do your acknowledging, I'm going to do my part and help you. So when he, when you do your acknowledging, listen. He's going to hook you up. He's going to find, he's going to have a way to help you. Just like how the sister shared how we all met. I would not have been, this was all mission. Our meeting had everything to do with mission. You see what I'm trying to say? If, if it wasn't a mission in their spirit about a singles ministry, why would I need to be here? You see how simple it is? If there's not a mission for two people to be in Los Angeles, why do God need to get you married? Now, this may scare some people, but I hope it don't. If God see you getting to L.A. so much peacefully, so much simplicity, um, sim- with simplicity by yourself, if he saw that before the foundation of the world, you were destined to have the gift and the grace to stay single so you can get there faster. Because in your makeup, you were not made to really connect with somebody that can help you get there because of your uniqueness. So you probably got to go to prayer and say, Lord, I just first, I know I want to get married, but let me just ask this real scary question, God. <laughs> I'm scared to ask this question because you're going to tell me. And I may not like what I hear, but Lord, do, am I, do you, am, I know I want to get married, but do you need me single to do your work? 
You see, that's a, you see, that's a scary question. Because you may hear, yes, my son, like the next second. <laughs> You'd be like, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> that was a devil talking. <laughs> that was not a God. <laughs> I know your voice, Jesus. That wasn't you. No. <laughs> so, so you, but I, you know, but if you feel that, feel that in your spirit, because remember, and when he places, if when he places desire for you to get married, a lot of times the only way he knows that you're going to get to your mission, this is where the desires come, because sometimes he gives you the, the natural. Those desires you have for the opposite, those are natural things. Sometimes we rebuke and stuff that's natural. It's just like if I cough right now, y'all say to Satan, I rebuke you. I'm, I'm not. I'm human. I coughed. I mean, <laughs> you know, I sneeze and you're like, up oh, the devil here, the devil here. No, look, it shouldn't be like that. That's human things, okay? Now, if you having uh, an attraction to somebody of the opposite sex, that is not sinful. It's if you start lusting after it, that's when it becomes sinful, okay? So we keep it in perspective. But God put those desires there on purpose because he knows the only way that you're going to do this mission is to have the desire. So he starts saying, I give you the desires of your heart. Oh, can I, should I give you all this deep nugget? Mm. I should give it, I should give it, okay, okay. Because I don't know how many more of these I'm going to be doing in this Buffalo area. So let me give y'all this, let me give y'all this. I just, this may be so good, we may shout. Well, let me just give it to you. John 15. I'm going to just, I'm going to have to give it to y'all because I, I don't want to keep y'all too late, but I'm, I cannot keep this one to myself either. Oh, to keep, keep, keep y'all late. And I'm, I'm loving y'all too. I can stay here all day. I love the atmosphere here. Okay, this is going to be so deep. This thing had me so messed up when, I, when God showed me this. John chapter 15, this is what it says. I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That is key. Underline that. Abide in me, now watch this, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. It's about to get good. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. That scripture changed my life. Yeah. Now, let me give y'all this nugget. Oh, God, this is just too good. See, this is the kind of stuff you get when you just turn the TV off and just meditate and just let the Lord speak back to you. Sometimes we pray and we pray and we do doing all the talking. Sometimes it's good to just shut our mouths and let the Lord speak. Because I would have probably never gotten this if I didn't shut my mouth. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you should ask whatever you will and it shall be done. And I've read, I've I've taught from this chapter for years. And the thing he showed me about it was, he says, if I am the vine, you are the branch. So you are connected to me. Think about mission again. You are connected to me. So you are just a branch. You're offshoot of the vine. So he says, if the branch needs something, Guess how, guess how it's going to get to the branch? Through the vine. It has to get through the vine to get to the branch. It won't come through the branch to the vine. Right. Everybody got that part right? It comes up through the vine, then it shoots out to the branch. Now, he says, I will give you the desires of your heart in, in, in Psalms 37 and 4. So you know what God does. God will put what his desire is, shoot that through the vine, and it comes to you. And you pray it back to the vine because it's all the same thing. So you're sitting there saying, Lord, I wish I had someone just like this. And God said, you were just praying me because that's what I wanted for you. So I put the prayer inside you because you were connected to me. If this thing, if this is the branch, so if this branch need uh, or, or begin to start praying something. It's praying it because it's connect this thing right here, which is the vine, really prayed it for it. Oh, Lord, help me. Mm, so that person that you've been praying for, God has been putting that 
in you. So he says, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. Meaning, when I give you the desires of your heart, it's really you getting what I desire. Because you're connected to me. <laughs> Lord, help me. So, if you're disconnected from the vine, you could be praying what, like what James said. You pray and ask and misc, and you don't get it because you want to consume it upon your own lust. Because you're not connected. Because you don't know what you want. You thought you wanted Ricky, and guess what? Ricky was the one that punched you in the eye. You didn't know because you were disconnected from what the vine wanted for you. So if you are in him and he in you, whatever he wants for you, he shoots it through your vein and you come in prayer and say, man, why do I get this desire to want to get married? God says, oh, that was just, you know, that was just what I wanted for that branch. And the only way you go get it or desire to pray it is if I shoot it in you because you're so connected to me. That's what being connected to the Lord would do. You start praying what he already wanted for you. You think it's a fresh prayer and it was always in there. It was always in the vine in the first place. Okay, I can't give y'all no more of my nuggets. <laughs> you thought you wanted to go to L.A. The vine wanted you to go. And it came out of your prayer. That's why he says whatever you ask is going to be done because it's something I already wanted. Okay, I got to stop. This is getting too good. <laughs> She's not going to do a shut in, Lord. Help me. <laughs> so our job is to, remember we were talking about, the connected to the mission is, is who? God. That's why we got to, as singles, connect to the vine. Because the, the vine is not going to let the branch take anything to it. So when you begin to pray, God, there has been times, and I said it before, there's been times that I have prayed things and nothing happened. There's been times I prayed things that took months, and then there's times I prayed things that seemed like it happened like that the next second. And that God has matured me and taught me that, listen, every time you connect to the vine and you start praying, God will automatically answer it because it's not really you praying it. It's what the vine always wanted for the branch in the first place. The branch just finally got revelation. <laughs> so you thought this was a fresh new prayer, and God was like, they finally got it. It took them five years, but they finally got it. I wanted them to be this blessed, but they didn't know they can have it because they have been so disconnected from the vine so long. So God is trying to bless you so good. So when he says he's going to give you desires of your heart, he is really trying to give you beyond. That's why he says he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you're able to ask or think. Because the vine sometimes will say, I want this. But the vine, but the, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, the branch may say, I want this. But the vine may say, that's all you want. You want one, one thing of orange to come off your branch? I sort of was hoping 20. You were just praying for one, even though you were in the ballpark of what, I, what was supposed to grow, your number was too low. But I really saw 30 oranges coming off your branch, and you just dancing over one. That, Lord, just give me one. I'll be happy. So now you see he will do exceedingly abundantly because he says, listen, it's hard to be connected, connected to me and don't multiply. So on your branch are other branches that starts growing. And guess what those other branches get? The same thing the vine got, the same thing this branch got. Now you understand how the multiplication works. So the family comes through. You have husband and wife, then you have the kids. You have their kids. So he says your seed will constantly be blessed. You know why? Because you're connected to me. Everything that grows from you is going to be blessed because you are connected to the main thing, which is the vine. Now this is going to help you understand where your number one attack is. When the devil is attacking you, he's not up here trying to, you know, just pluck oranges off your branch. You know what he's really trying to get to? This part right here where this branch and that vine connects. So he, he, he sends all these counterfeit people in your life, these counterfeit men and these counterfeit women in your life just to try to cut you right here. Because what happens when this breaks and, and, and what happens when this branch leaves the vine? It dies all by itself. <laughs> Everything attached to this is alive because of the connection. Yes. 
your job, your house, everything that's connected to you will suffocate if it's disconnected from the vine. So the devil's job, every time he sends an attack your way, is never to just pluck fruit from your tree. It's always to disconnect you from the vine because if he does that, he gets the fruit, he gets all the branches, he gets everything in one shot. That's why we always have to make sure. That's why the worship was so cool. That's why everything is so good because this is what's making us stay connected. So the devil's like, okay, I know singles' number one challenge is they're impatient. They can't wait. So because they're so anxious to get married, they got a sense that they go, they go, you know, they want somebody to hold them and, you know, they, they want to go to the movies with somebody. I tell people all the time, listen, if you got that urge to just go to the movies with somebody, just get your sister, get your kid, get your nephew, and just go to the show and have a blast. But just don't go with anybody just because you're lonely. You know, the number one, I think the number one spiritual attack day for singles is Valentine's Day. <laughs> the devil, <laughs> folks go, folks just get, I don't know, I, folks just get lonely on Valentine's Day. I mean, really, people get, go through a lot of things. And I think what happens is that people just start feeling like I don't have anybody. You know, I just need somebody. To, and God knows that you're human. He, uh, he's not up there saying, I, 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 you don't supposed to feel none of that. He's just like, listen, just, I'm hooking you up. I just need you to just let the fruits of the spirit of self-control to operate because you're connected to my mind why I'm setting up the mission. Because the mission got to be in place. I don't never put managers in a place that don't have no mission. I'm, if I would be a wrong God to throw you into a, a work field where there's no work. So let me put the pieces together. So you sitting over here struggling and what's happening while you're waiting patiently and you're like, Lord, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to get married. I'm ready to get my life. And somebody, God is over here getting that man or that woman set up to be a blessing to you. If you got them right now when you wanted it, you, you will be like, okay, I'm happy, but I don't have the full butterfly. I got a, you know, I still got that caterpillar and that's bothering me. So I share the story a lot. Uh, one time I got, um, I was making some, uh, y'all, how, how have y'all ever ate, um, ate that shake and bake chicken? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had some of that. And I remember one time I, um, I had a real busy day that day, but I was real hungry. I was super hungry. And I remember, you know, I breaded it and everything, did everything. Like I said, I put it in the pan, I put it in the oven at the temperature the box set. And because I was so hungry, I got this revelation. <laughs> I got this revelation from somewhere. I, I even say it was definitely probably it wasn't from God. And something said, if the box is saying 375 for 35 minutes, I just wonder if I shifted this thing to 450, would that sort of, you know, help the, I was doing math. And so I did it. I cranked that heat thing up to 450 because I was so hungry. And, I, and, you know, I looked through the oven and looked, I was done. I was like, oh, thank, I'm so glad I did it that way. I took it out. I was so happy. I was starving. I, and I opened that thing and with all this blood just said, and I said, oh. And then I had to go and throw that away. Go and get me some fast food because I was running out of time. I didn't even enjoy what I was supposed to enjoy because I got too impatient. I would not wait for the timing for it to be perfected. That's where we mess up as most singles. God is about to literally bless you with the best piece of shake and bake chicken. <laughs> it's about to come out the oven. You say, I'm tired of waiting. Give me this thing now. You cut it and it's bleeding. And you're like, if I could have just waited 15 more minutes and not turned the heat up on purpose. So the outside of it was done. Uh-oh. The outside of it was done. That's key for us singles. Because we visual, you know, we like to say, oh, look at the boy, nice shoes. He's matching. She's matching. The outside looked done. But there's still some blood in there. If you just let it simmer in that oven a little longer, let it, let it marinate. And I've had some pieces where it was all the way done. And then when I looked at the two, I said to myself, I would never do that again. I don't care how hungry I am. I'm, I'll, if I have to go and just jog around the corner or something to keep from being distracted, 
I am not going to ever do that again because I got tired of just, you know, now I wasted that. Then I had to go get something I didn't want. Uh Uh-oh. Because I had to eat something. So I went and snatched and got me something I didn't want. Do you take this wonderful wife to be your wife? Or how do you say it? I forgot. Do you take this wonderful woman to be your wife? And you look at them and you're like, I'm supposed to have a shake and bake. This is a Big Mac in front of me. I was supposed to, in purpose, in mission, I was supposed to have a shake and bake. And I'm standing in front of a Big Mac. But because this church is packed, I put $10,000 into this thing. I do. You know how many times that's happening every week? All because of just mission is going. I have, I'm so convinced mission, putting that mission in the forefront. Because everything, I, you know, every, everything that has mission makes sense. It, I'm starting to understand. When you, when you look at sports, the mission, there, there's a mission. And I was watching um, the, uh, the wrestlers the other day. And at, I was somewhere eating. I was watching the TV. And they had the two, the two guys wrestling. And it was so funny. All this fighting they did. Afterwards, they just gave each other a big hug. You know why they did that? Because they understood the mission of the game. (laughs) The mission of the game was to try to knock each other down. And you can't be upset with each other after this because we are here for a purpose. This is some revelation, y'all. We need to take to our marriages. (laughs) So when you and your spouse get that moment, that heated argument, you know what's going to help you say? You know, let's get, let's just, it's not worth it. The mission the mission. We still got a mission. This is all part of the part of the mission. The mission is going to be the thing that really brings us back together. So one of the things that God has helped me to understand to share with singles is that we can't get to the point where we so desperate that we just begin to try to help God out. What I did with that piece of chicken was helping God is like helping God out. I went and took it on put my own self. You know, I leaned to my, I leaned to, I, I had leaned big time to my own understanding. And I was very selfish. That poor chicken, I didn't even apologize <laughs> for throwing it away. It had nothing to do with my, and it was all my mistake. And look what, I lost a good piece of chicken for that. I should go over to its grave and just pray for it or something. All because I was selfish, I just demolished purpose because of my selfishness so the truth be told when we get married i I, i'm going to tell you something that may that i want us to think about we are not responsible to change that other person's mind that person is not yours i know that may hurt that person is god's and god is loaning them to you on earth you are god's manager so when that person comes in your life, the first thing you need to ask your boss is, Lord, if you could just give me some instructions for this particular blessing you gave me, how does this thing run? What buttons don't that I should not hit? See, y'all, I'm going to be asking God all kinds of questions. All of us got buttons. And God knows those buttons. So just go to the maker and say, Lord, for this particular thing or person I have, what buttons should I not hit? Because I, I don't want the... Uh, the airbag to, to, to jump out the steering wheel and hit me. If I, you know, because if what I like knowledge, you know what we'll do? Ooh, what is that? Boop! <laughs> and we get shocked. But if you read the instructions that come with the car, the car is going to tell you certain things you don't do. You see what I'm trying to say? The instructions come with the blessing. Oh, Lord, that's a whole nother seminar. I ain't going to start that one. So when the person God finally pl- drops in your lap, the first thing you should say, Lord, what's the instructions for, for this blessing? Every man is not the same. Every woman is not the same. You, how many of y'all like dogs? Good. Okay. Make sure you know what kind of dog you get when you get a real dog. You know, little kids crack me up. I want a dog. I want a dog. What kind of dog? I don't just want a dog. And you bring, and they go snatch a pit bull. 
But in their mind, they were thinking poodle. They wanted something that was real cuddly. Now they get this real rough dog because they didn't know the nature of the dog they got. And now they're sitting there hiding behind their own bed from the dog that they got because they didn't know the nature of it. All you got to do is just say, listen, what kind of dog? So when, when you're connected to your mind, just be like, you know, Lord, I'm connected to you. You know the nature of the man or the nature of the woman that's coming into my life. Help me to manage them properly to where you will be pleased with the way I managed it. So if you get somebody, I'm going to have to say this, if you get somebody who has a very high uh, sex drive or something, listen, you're the manager. Don't be talking about, I'm tired. No, you're the manager. (laughs) I'm serious. You got to, because if you don't do it, don't be talking about the devil attacking my marriage. If it was built with that type of drive from the creator, he called you to be the one to make sure it keeps gas in it. If she's the type that either hear you're beautiful every day, you got to say it, you got to say it, you, you are beautiful, and mean it too. <laughs> Don't be just kidding. <laughs> you got to say it. <laughs> because I'm telling you, so we're all, we all have buttons. And there is some things about all of us that God knows that mm, you don't operate well when these buttons are pressed. And these people that's coming to your life, a lot of times they learn this along the way. So you have a lot of married couples who will tell you, you know, you just learn as you go along. And God has started teaching me some things you can learn before you get in. You can learn a lot before you get into something. If somebody is telling me right now, listen, you're about to work this job, and at this job from, from, for three hours, you gonna have to, you got to sit there with, with these gloves on, and you have to dig in dirt, whatever. If they're telling me this before I get hired, why would I complain after I get the job? Thank you. Thank you. I knew what I was getting. You see what I'm saying? But if I get the... <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but think about it. But if, I get, if you just say, I have a job for you, and I come expecting to, you know, maybe wipe the walls, but then you put me out there. Now I may be disappointed because of lack of communication. But if I knew up front, I'm coming and ready. This is why the dating and courtship part is so key because you got to find out who are you. You see what I'm saying? So forget the bills. Forget, you know, what kind of, you know, cologne and stuff they like. Figure out how are you made? Because that's going to help me tell you if I'm, re- if I'm willing to be the one to manage you. Because <laughs> you know what God would do if you're not willing? God will say, I appreciate your honesty. Thank you so much. You're awesome. But I have a lot of other daughters or a lot of sons in this kingdom that would love to manage that. <laughs> and that would easily get him to L.A. So thank you for admitting that you don't want to do it. So I'm going to still use you in what you do, but you won't have who I intended because of your choice. Now you can see how choices come into play. Because some people say, well, if it's God's will, it's God's will. Yes, it's God's will, but God, all he going to do is put the person in your path. He's not going to force you to yank them. God is not going to walk through and say, you better marry her or you're going to hell. You're going to burn if you don't marry her. He's not going to do that. (laughs) He won't do that. He will put them in your path and he will give you the revelation that this is your, this is your, de- this is your, your soulmate that's going to help you get to your destination. And you have to be so connected to the vine and know this is the person that God is connecting me with. Because we're both going this way and I feel peace about it because he's peace and I'm connected to him. So if you feel this peace, it's because he's sending you a signal that it ain't the one. He's not pleased, so you're feeling, well, I don't feel like this is the person because the person you're connected to is not feeling it. <laughs> Your vine is telling you something ain't right with this connection. That's why you're up all night with these crazy dreams about the person. Your vine is revealing to you, you are about to connect something to me that I didn't approve. But if you're being filled with peace, your vine is telling you, yes, go, go, go. Oh, God, I hope y'all are being blessed. I hope you are. So I, I, my job tonight was to basically just to bring us back to mission. When we pray and fast and study and worship, let God become back in the center. He should be like our center focus. Everything should be pointed towards him. All the other stuff, the jobs, the careers, the people that we could, 
all that, he says, listen, if you just seek after my righteousness, meaning just keep your, if you keep your focus, just keep your focus on the mission, I'm going to make your mission so crystal clear, plain, which is going to make it easy for you to know who not to listen to, who not to come in your life. That's why he says, my sheep know my voice. You know why he says that? Because guess what? There's a lot of voices. If your child, if you have a kid and your child screamed in a huge room, mom, you go know that's your kid, even though there's a lot of other moms and kids around. And that comes with being connected to them long enough to hear what it sounds like. So he's like, listen, my sheep's not going to be misled if they stay connected to me. If they spend time with me in prayer, if they spend time with me alone, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to train them on how I speak. So he's trying to get us to the point where we're so clear on where we're going that when a person come in our life, they may have 99% accuracy of what you sense you want in that one little percent that one little red flag that you feeling listen to that because we you can get not because a counter you know i put i think i put on facebook the other day about um i because i saw a five dollar bill and it blew my mind i put how i saw a five dollar counterfeit bill and as god's my witness i didn't know it was counterfeit until i, I took it to the bank <laughs> And they told me this was not a real $5 bill. I'm like, uh, I didn't know. It looks real to me. And they, and they explained to me, they was like, well, the person who gave that to you, that wasn't a real $5 bill. And I'm like, I would have never known that was a counterfeit. It looked identical like the real thing. And it was only one thing on that dollar that just proved the difference. And that's the counterfeit thing that you need to be looking at. Because the person that's going to come in your life is always going to speak in tongues. Guess what? Because you know the devil's smart enough to know that you ain't going to take somebody walking with you, coming to you with a cigarette in his mouth. He know that you're that smart. He know you're so smart because you're a worshiper. He is not going to send a guy your way who, who you know, pants sagging down. Talking about, hey, what's the, what, what? He, you going to look at him and be like, just, you know, Lord, I don't even need you for this one. Satan, just get, just, I already know that. You, it's something that's going to be clear. So for her, he's going to have to bring somebody like, praise the Lord. Oh, man, listen, God is so good. God, guess what he said to me last night? And she's like, oh, wow. And he starts spitting scripture. She's like, okay, Lord, I'm starting to feel this. And then he starts lifting up his hands in worship. And you're like, oh. <laughs> and then he does this, and that really gets you. <laughs> she's like, I'm so that's him. <laughs> and he does, and the devil says, okay, I got to do this long enough to hide the one thing. I got to do that long enough, keep him doing that long enough to hide that 1% that she is not seeing because she's so distracted by all this worship and speaking in tongues. And that one thing is the thing that will kill her mission if she finds out. So I got to keep him speaking scriptures. I got to keep him saying things like, let's pray together. And she's just going with the flow. And all the time he's like, yes, it's working, it's working, it's working, it's working, it's working. And then finally he says, listen, we've been friends four months. <laughs> I just want to know if you want to marry me. And she's like, <gasps> yes. He's like, yes. So the devil is like, okay, we're getting close. So six months go by, they're preparing for marriage. And then all of a sudden, he, there's he getting closer to the mirrors. He's still worshiping. He's still worshiping. And then and some information sneak out somehow right before wedding time. And she said, wait, I, did, I thought you told me this. And, well, oh, well, yeah, well, you know, I, yeah, I didn't mean that. But, you know, but God is good. He's trying to brush over it. And she's starting to see that. Wait a minute. Something you wasn't telling me. They're about to get married. And the funny thing about it, the person that God sort of intended looks, I'm, I'm not saying physically look like him. But in purpose, in expression, may look almost a split in image. But that 1% is the thing that was going to rip them apart two years down the line. And the devil was sitting there saying, yes, come on, say I do, say I do, say I do. Because once you say I do, you have just became married to the stand right here. And your mic stand was coming two months after that. And now she's about to go. She's supposed to go to Los Angeles, but they are going to fight so much because she wants to now, she want to go to Los Angeles, but he want to go to San Antonio so bad. So guess what? They're going to fight so much in their marriage that they're not going to even get to L.A. or San Antonio. They'll, <laughs> they'll be slain in the spirit, head and blood, halfway there because there's confusion of mission. 
Now you see why the, counter, the counterfeit comes to distract mission. Yes. I got to close because this is getting too good. I know. I, this is just, so I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, counterfeits comes in all types, shapes and sizes, ages, colors. They come, and one of the easiest ways they catch us is through the outward act of worship or prayer or spirituality. This is why we got to be so connected to the divine to hear. That's why, if, and, and, and trust me, if a person does actually go out, whatever, you feel a sense to go out, whatever, and you go out and you start talking to them, ask. The, you you got to know your mission so well that when you start asking questions, let the questions be mission-oriented. Because that's going to tell you a lot. Because your counterfeit is going gonna, is gonna to talk a little bit about it, but he may, he'll be diverting a lot from it. The person who really got your mission is going to really be, man, man, I can't wait till I get to L.A., you like you really, y'all both just y'all can talk for hours about your mission, but the other person, yeah, I like L.A. You know, it's a nice city. I like the Lakers. They started changing the subject, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, you know, I like the Lakers too. But um, what do you think about this man? You know, but you know what I really like, and, they, and they're and they're saying that, but you know, we're so lost by their cologne and their perfume that we're not even listening and paying attention. That this person is not even going in the same direction I'm going, though they are saved. That is 101 on how singles should maximize their singleness. Find your mission and run, follow Christ 100% on, with mission in mind, and I almost, almost guarantee you that you are not going to get cooked up with the counterfeit. You're actually going to start seeing all the counterfeits that came in your life, and you're going to start seeing more clearly. And I see why now that day wasn't the one. We dated for two years, and all of a sudden, they fell off. They fell off because if you start driving 90 uh, west long enough, and that person really wasn't designed to go there, you go get some frustration. And that person either go get out your car and say, listen, I'm, I need to take a taxi the other way. That's how breakups happen because people start to realize you're going somewhere I wasn't made to go. That's really what a breakup is. We decided we are not going in the same direction, so let's split here in Nebraska. But if the purpose is up front clear, you sure you want to go to L.A.? I'm positive that's what God put in my spirit. I'm going to L.A. And I know I'm going to L.A. So listen, um, you know, what, what, kind of, what, kind of, what kind of pit stops you? What kind of food you like along the way? These are things we call enjoyment in marriage. You know, now, now you can ask things like, what kind of food you like? So if we see an Applebee's on the way to our destination, let's stop and enjoy Applebee's together. Now you can start seeing the dating and the googly fun stuff that comes. But guess what's still in the forefront? The mission. We get together and say, do you like Applebee's? What else do you like? And we don't even know where we're going. <laughs> That's backwards. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Find mission. Everything else fall in place. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Father, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. Lord, I just thank you so much, Father, for releasing this word tonight. And, Lord, I just pray right now that every last one of us, Father, will get a clear clear sense and clear direction, Father, of our mission. We do not want to miss, Lord, our mission. We have been focused too long, Lord God, on our loneliness and our, and our feelings of, Lord, when we go get married. And, Lord, thank you for bringing us back to focus that, Lord God, it is all about your mission. And, Father, in our mission, if you bless us with a mate, we will be pleased. But, Father, we are we making up our minds tonight that we're going to hit our target goal and by pleasing you, Father. And, Lord God, I just pray tonight, Lord God, that you bless everybody here who desire a mate. Father, blow their mind. Give them way beyond what they expect, ask, or think. And, Lord, I pray that they be on the same page. I pray that they walk together in everything that they do, that their desires are similar, that everything is, 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 is according to your will, Lord. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' wonderful, holy, blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.